There are landscapes in the United States that beguile scientists, lure hikers, and unsettle those who understand their hidden risks. Idaho's Sawtooth Range is one of them. At first glance, its jagged skyline looks timeless, carved into rugged elegance by glaciers and time. But what lies beneath that beauty could one day prove catastrophic? How do you explain a landscape that looks as if the Earth itself has tried to claw its way to the surface? Why does this place seem so alive, so restless? And why do geologists speak of it with such reverence and unease? Sheep Mountain, a part of this vast and enigmatic region, offers a glimpse into the hidden drama beneath the sawtooths. Hike its ridges and you find yourself tracing the scars of immense geologic violence, patterns etched into the earth that refuse to remain silent. From the ground, the rocks rise in double rows like colossal fins along the back of some ancient beast. For those who walk here often, the question becomes unavoidable. How did these towering ridges form? And what do they reveal about what still brews beneath? Even for experienced geologists, the answers are not straightforward. Stand on the crest of the Sheep Mountain anticline, and you are dwarfed by layers of limestone tilted at impossible angles. Some are thin, brittle, almost plate-like, and others are thick bands of gypsum that refuse to erode despite centuries of assault by wind, water, and ice. These contrasting layers are not merely decorative, they are the key to understanding the forces that shaped and continue to shape this restless land. Resistant stone guards the ridgelines, softer materials collapse into gullies and together they create the fins, the flat irons, and the rhythmic canyons that make this place both spectacular and ominous. Patterns emerge if you take the time to observe. Look across the drainages and valleys and you notice something uncanny, a rhythm a near-perfect spacing between ridges and gullies, as though nature has been working from a blueprint. Regularly spaced canyons and ridges are not entirely uncommon, but here in the Sawtooths, they reveal something deeper. Such consistency suggests forces not only of erosion, but of uplift and tilting, forces that are still at work. Just a few miles from Sheep Mountain's fins, the eastern face of the range tells the same story on a grander scale. Uniform valleys marching across the landscape, a silent drumbeat of tectonic unrest. And yet, even these elegant patterns conceal violence. Imagine the flank of the Bighorn Mountains where slabs of limestone lie like toppled dominoes across the slope. Jeep trails cut into the rock only underscore the enormity of the features. Giant slabs, finger-shaped ridges, and deep notches gouged into the mountainside. Here too, the same combination of resistant and erodible layers dictates the shapes we see today. But scale matters. The larger the ridge, the bigger the underlying forces. Each fin, each flat iron, is a geological confession, whispering of stresses too immense to fully grasp. Back at Sheep Mountain, clues multiply. The rocks dip at angles of nearly 50 degrees, a sign of the immense folding that thrusts them skyward. Limestone resists erosion, holding the ridges aloft, while softer layers of siltstone and mudstone crumble into the valleys between. The repetition is mesmerizing. Hard, soft, harder, softer. Each combination producing another fin, another angled flat iron. From above, the landscape looks like a giant saw blade, its teeth gnawed by erosion yet never dulled. Drone footage shows the story even more clearly. Big fins, subtle fins, and layers upon layers, each record of a geological battle still underway. The process can be recreated in miniature with nothing more than layers of colored clay. Tilt them to mimic folding, then carve through them with water. The result is uncanny. V-shaped notches, miniature flat irons, and ridges that mirror the sawtooths on a tiny scale. It may seem like child's play, but it reveals the mechanism erosion relentlessly cutting into tilted beds of hard and soft rock. Over millennia, what begins as subtle differences in resistance becomes dramatic features visible from miles away. But clay models cannot capture the danger that such formations imply when magnified to the size of mountains. What they hint at is the instability of the very crust beneath Idaho. For as awe-inspiring as the Sawtooth Range appears, it is not a monument to a completed past. 
It is a living system, still subject to forces that could one day explode into catastrophe. The Sawtooth Fault itself stretches more than 40 miles along the base of the mountains, a tectonic boundary capable of producing earthquakes large enough to reshape the region. Scientists have found evidence of multiple massive quakes here within the last 10,000 years. Some displaced the ground by more than 15 feet in a single violent jolt. And yet, the range today sits in deceptive quiet, with towns and recreation areas nestled beneath peaks that may not always be so forgiving. What does it mean when you see such consistent patterns of erosion, uplift, and tilting? Does it suggest a landscape imbalance or a crust under unbearable strain? Every ridge and fin may be more than a curiosity. It could be a symptom. And if the patterns repeat so faithfully, does that not mean the cycle is destined to continue? The Sawtooth Fault is considered by seismologists to be one of the most dangerous in the Rocky Mountain region despite its remote location. Unlike California's San Andreas, its movements are less frequent, but potentially more devastating when they occur. Silence here does not mean safety. It means pressure is building. Standing at the base of Sheep Mountain, one cannot help but feel humbled. The rock layers reveal a story stretching back hundreds of millions of years. Oceans that once covered this land, sediments that hardened into limestone, tectonic collisions that bent and tilted the strata, and erosion that sculpted it into its present form. But even this sweeping history is incomplete without acknowledging the present danger. The very features that attract hikers and geologists alike, the fins, the flat irons, the rhythmic canyons, are also warnings etched in stone. They tell us the crust is fractured, the stress is real, and the system is far from dormant. Those who know the region speak with both admiration and caution. Spend enough time among the fins and you notice their levels, some well-developed, others barely emerging, some colossal, others subtle. Each represents a different scale of the same process, a hierarchy of erosional scars. And behind the beauty lies the realization, if the land has been shaped by repeated cycles of uplift and quake, what guarantee do we have that it has finished its work? The Sawtooth Range may not be as well known as California's San Andreas Fault or Yellowstone's supervolcano, but beneath its serene surface lies a hazard that could one day rival either. The land here has a rhythm, yes, but rhythms can be broken. What happens when the next break comes? When you look at the Sawtooth Range from a distance, it appears serene, an untouched wilderness of granite peaks and alpine lakes. But tranquility is deceptive. Hidden in the very structure of these mountains lies one of the most underestimated seismic hazards in North America. The Sawtooth Fault, stretching like a scar along the base of the range, is a sleeping giant. Geologists have pieced together a story of repeated upheaval, massive earthquakes separated by centuries of quiet. This silence is what makes it so unnerving. Unlike faults that release stress in frequent smaller jolts, the Sawtooth Fault holds its energy waiting until it can unleash destruction all at once. Evidence of past ruptures is written across the land if you know where to look. Displaced ridges, warped drainages, and offset stream channels show that the ground here has leapt upward by many feet in single violent episodes. Studies suggest that some of the largest quakes in this region occurred within the last 10,000 years, tearing the ground apart and permanently altering the landscape. Imagine a wall of earth suddenly shifting upward by 15 feet or more. That is the power stored within this fault system. And the unsettling truth is that there is no geological law stating it won't happen again in our lifetime. The surrounding communities from the towns of Stanley to Sun Valley live in the shadow of this risk. Tourists come for the solitude, the skiing, the summer hikes, and the pristine wilderness, rarely considering that beneath the beauty lies a time bomb. Idaho is not often spoken of in the same breath as California when it comes to earthquakes, but the hazard here is no less real. What makes it more dangerous is the lack of preparation. Infrastructure has not been built with the expectation of massive seismic events, and awareness among the public is limited. If the fault were to rupture tomorrow, the consequences could be devastating not only for the region, but for the broader Rocky Mountain Corridor. One need only recall the Bora Peak earthquake of 1983, 
Idaho's largest recorded quake, which struck with a magnitude of 6.9 and caused severe damage. Roads split apart, irrigation systems failed, and two children lost their lives when a school collapsed. That quake was not even on the Sawtooth Fault but on a different fault system nearby. If a quake of similar or larger magnitude were to strike directly beneath the Sawtooths, with their proximity to communities, ski resorts, and critical transportation routes, the impact would be exponentially greater. Experts suggest that the Sawtooth Fault is capable of producing quakes in the magnitude 7 range or higher, events strong enough to level structures, trigger landslides, and set off cascading failures in dams and reservoirs. The geology of the range hints at what such a rupture would look like. The fins and flat irons admired by hikers are products of uplift and erosion, but they also tell of instability. Each tilted layer is a reminder of stress accumulating in the crust. Each rhythmic canyon is a clue that forces are working in patterned repetition. If the land has broken before, it can break again. And with each passing year of quiet, the odds of another break increase. The longer the pause, the larger the release when it comes. Scientists attempt to model these risks, but prediction remains elusive. What they can say with confidence is that the Sawtooth Fault is active. In 2020, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake rattled central Idaho, its epicenter not far from the Sawtooths. It was a stark reminder that this region is far from seismically dormant. That quake, while damaging, was not on the Sawtooth Fault itself, but it underscored the fact that stress is being redistributed across the region. Some researchers worry that such events could be precursors, transferring strain toward the fault and priming it for a larger rupture. When the crust shifts in one place, it often sets off a chain of adjustments elsewhere. The Sawtooths may simply be waiting their turn. For those who live in or visit the area, the prospect is chilling. The Sawtooths are remote but not isolated. Highways snake through the valleys connecting rural communities. Dams control reservoirs that supply water downstream. Power lines cross mountain passes. In a major quake, these lifelines could be severed in an instant. Landslides would sweep across roads, isolating towns. Communication networks could fail. In winter, avalanches triggered by shaking could bury highways and ski resorts. In summer, wildfires sparked by ruptured gas lines or downed power equipment could ignite across the dry forests. The human toll could be magnified not just by the quake itself, but by the chaos it unleashes in its aftermath. And then there is the psychological effect. For decades, the Sawtooths have been marketed as an untouched paradise, a place where nature inspires awe rather than fear. To suddenly recognize that this paradise sits atop a restless fault line would be a shock to residents and visitors alike. How do you reconcile the beauty of jagged peaks mirrored in alpine lakes with the knowledge that those very peaks owe their existence to violence deep underground? The duality is hard to accept, but it is the truth of this land. The danger extends beyond the immediate vicinity of the fault. Seismic waves from a large rupture would ripple outward, shaking much of Idaho and potentially affecting neighboring states. Cities like Boise, though farther from the mountains, could experience strong shaking, particularly in areas built on softer sediments that amplify seismic energy. Infrastructure such as highways, pipelines, and power grids is interconnected meaning that damage in one region can ripple through the economy and daily life of areas far removed from the fault itself. A rupture beneath the Sawtooths would not be a local disaster, it would be a regional crisis. What makes this all the more sobering is how little we truly know. Geologists can study the layers, map the fault, and measure its slip rates, but they cannot say when the next big quake will strike. It could be centuries away, or it could happen tomorrow. The land offers hints but no calendar. Every fin, every tilted ridge, every rhythmic valley is a message from the earth, but deciphering its timing remains beyond our grasp. This uncertainty is perhaps the most frightening part of all. Preparation is difficult when the hazard is invisible until the moment it arrives. Yet ignoring the risk is not an option. The Sawtooth Range is too important, too central to Idaho's identity to leave unstudied. More monitoring stations, more seismic research, and stronger building codes could reduce the danger. 
Public education campaigns could ensure that residents and tourists alike know how to respond when the ground begins to shake. These steps may not prevent the quake, but they can mitigate the catastrophe. History shows us that ignoring such risks only compounds the disaster when it finally comes due. Walking through Sheep Mountain, standing before the dramatic fins and flat irons, it is easy to lose yourself in wonder. The land feels eternal as though it has always been this way, but geology teaches us otherwise. Nothing in these mountains is static. They are the product of ongoing forces, forces that will continue to shape, tilt, and fracture the land long after we are gone. To stand here is to witness a moment in an ongoing story, one chapter in a saga of uplift and destruction. The catastrophe brewing beneath the sawtooths is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. The land itself tells us this if only we are willing to listen. The question then is not whether the sawtooths will shake again. And don't forget to tap that HYPE icon so this story reaches more people who need to hear it. The more we know, the better we prepare.